Hello, and welcome to episode 38 of React Native Radio. Today on our panel, we have Peter Pykarczyk. Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Natter Davitt. And today we're going to be talking with Gabrielle Rubens about testing React Native. We're going to be mainly talking about unit testing, and we might just kind of get into a general um, conversation about integration testing. So, Gabrielle, uh, welcome to the show, and can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Thank you, man. Hi there, everyone. I'm Gabrielle Rubens. I'm, I'm from Brazil. I work at Astro Crothers. Astro Crothers and Dewey Beauty. Awesome stuff with React Native and Meteor every day. Very cool. Can you kind of get into or go into how you personally got into programming before we kind of get into the topic? Oh, yes, for sure. Yes. I started seriously with with programming at my 18th, but I have been playing around with JS and mobile, mobile development since my 15, 15 years. Yes, since my 12. Yes, since my 12, I was playing around with JS, but I seriously got into uh, really working with the technology when I was 18. So yeah, that's, that's it, mostly it. I started to have a course at of computer science that uh, here in Brazil, but I I dropped the university for some personal issues. Okay, so you kind of uh, you kind of been you've been self taught when you were younger, and you were thinking about kind of going to university, and you decided that you didn't want to. So you're basically a self taught developer. Yes, yes. I basically okay. uh, did it myself with my friends, and we played a lot with the programming, so we learn together. Yeah, that's the same with me. Yeah, that's awesome. So can you kind of uh, talk about what Astro Cutters does and how you guys use React Native? Oh, yes, yes. We we work for clients and for ourselves. We, we build some stuff for us and also provide services for clients. We, we mostly work with Meteor, and we, we do some, some apps with React Native for, for clients and for us. And we, we have been, we have been building stuff with React and Meteor for about some good time already. And we, you can visit our landing after we have put some work as we've done there. And we, we mostly work, we work just with, uh, JavaScript and mostly React, uh, Meteor in Vige, Meteor based solutions. So um, do you guys do web, I guess, as well? You do web and mobile? Yes, we do web and mobile applications. We also do some some front-end work, also just uh, web applications based on Meteor, on the front side, all just. But most of our, our work is just JavaScript, both server-side and client-side. We do all in JavaScript, and, we, and that, that's it. Okay, so I guess when you guys picked up React Native, had you guys already been working with the mobile framework or had you guys been building mobile apps? Or was this kind of what got you into building mobile apps? Oh, no, no. We have built, we built some apps on, on Cordova, but it was terrible. We felt that it wasn't the right way. Clients mostly complained about the performance of the app. So that was the the main motivation that we we got into React Native, the performance and the easy of building apps, because we have built some stuff with Ionic, integration of Meteor, and Angular, but it wasn't enough. The, the we have built really rich, really huge apps, and the performance was getting really not cool. So we decided to try React Native, and we got amazed by it. Okay, so I guess your clients have been uh, a lot uh, happier with the performance. Yeah, so a lot of much happier. <laughs> lots, lots of happiness. Do you use any Cordova plugins with React Native, or did you go all out React Native? No, no, we have we used some plugins for the sharing, social sharing plugins, uh, camera plugins, because it was an app that used lots of of media stuff. It was like a a social network. So it used lots of the, the phone, like geolocation and camera, social sharing, and the dozens of screens. So I think that was the point where the Ionic started not uh, giving all that we needed. And that was the point where React Native could give us what we needed at that time. That it was performance for a really huge app. 
but it, it, I, it's not public yet, uh, this app, because it's for a client, so it's private. Right? So I can just talk about it for now. So we kind of brought you on the show to talk about testing React Native. And I know that you wrote a pretty cool cl- a blog post a few months ago, maybe, about testing React Native with Mocha, Chai, Sinon, and Enzyme. Yeah. Can you kind of talk about if someone was coming into React Native, um, they've never worked with it before, and now they've built, you know, they're building an app and they want to integrate u- uh, unit tests. Can you kind of go over all the different options that are out there and available, and maybe kind of go over some pros and cons, like what's good about some of these methods and what's uh, you know not good about some of these testing methods? Oh yeah, f- for sure. So the, when I wrote the article, I was I went for Mocha because I I thought Jest wasn't so major at the time. It was some stuff wasn't she. I, I just doesn't wasn't she like the way we use it you to work with web right because we we most work mostly work with Mocha on the web when we test our web components. So I decided to go for a, a thing that we already uh, felt good about it. That it was Mocha. We already know it, so it would would be really cool if we could test React Native components with Mocha. So that was the main point why we decided to go for Mocha and not Jest. But uh, I have seen some some work there on the Jest repository on Facebook, and since that it's getting pretty cool now, and it's worth trying. I haven't tried it these days, but I I do want to try uh, really soon because I I saw that it, they are change some stuff there and it's it seems to be a worth trying now and for someone that uh, i recommend for someone that comes from the web environment to try to try mocha because he would think the guy he that does this uh may, may feel more comfortable testing with mocha because it it really likes like we test the React components. So someone coming from like web might feel more comfortable testing with Mocha as like they're, you know, as they're getting started. Yes, yes. It's really u- easy to get started with Mocha. There are some, uh, how I say, there is some stuff that it's it's a bit annoying. Like we, you, you have to mock manually the, the React native components to web components so you can test it nicely. But a guy has built a, a package called React Native Mocks that does this for all uh, React Native components. So we don't have to worry so much about this. The main point to test with Mock React Native is you to uh, make it Mock uh, uh, see the React Native components as web ones. So you can test the logic itself. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it mainly. So I guess when you're testing uh, your React Native app, what exactly like would you be testing? Would you be testing like an entire component? Uh, would you be uh, testing a container um, component, or like kind of go over like what exactly people normally test? Um, you know, in an application like this. Oh yeah. So for instance, I would test. I want to build tests for a, a login component. So I would test. Uh, the the handlers for for instance when the guy the user click on, on the sign up button I would listen for it and try to check if it, when the guy presses there it would call the the login method API and see if it is calling the with the right arguments passing the right arguments to it and G for containers elements I would check if it is calling the right uh, uh, the API for the assessing the data. So using Sinon, the stub library, this gets really easy to do this. You can mock and check the arguments that have been called for that function, and it becomes pretty easy. So uh, in resume, I would test uh, if the functions are getting called with the right arguments. I would test the the pieces first. The what the user can do. So, for instance, when the the user taps somewhere, I would check if the handler is being called with the right stuff. If when the component initializes, it is calling the something that it needs to be initialized. 
So mostly is this for unit testing. So um, can you kind of go into like if I wanted to add Mocha test to my existing project, like what would I need to do to get that going? Oh yeah, that's that's you would need to to install Mocha and to configure it to use your the Babel core register so it can parse your React Native code and JSX and the new ECMAScript syntax. That's pretty easy. You just pass a flag to the the command after including Mocha to your package.json dev dependencies. Uh, and also you need to install the React Native Mock library from NPM. So you can test your, your components as if they were web components, which make, which make much easier and simpler to test. So, and also I, I personally, I always prefer to create two commands, one command called test uh, on, on the scripts of package.json and one command called uh, test watch. So you can let the test for uh, CI server like Travis or Circle CI. And the test watch command you, you use on your, on your machine for developing and letting Mocha hang in there, watching for changes on their files and rerunning the tests again. Can we sort of talk more about how you would break down a page or a component and build tests for it, right? So um, in your in your article, you talked about, or the test that you had was like login, you know? So yeah. what if we have like a, a splash screen, for example, where you could register or log in, and then let's say when you do log in, you have to fire off a request to get the user information, right? So... Okay. If we're thinking about that flow, you know, and obviously, you know, like don't don't think about it too hard. But how would you how would you break that down into tests? You know, at least from a high level overview. About the splash screen, you mean what what kind of functionality you mean? Like the waiting, the timeout for the splash screen. Well, you, let's not even worry about the splash screen. Maybe it's a bad example, but just you have a login. You know, so you have a. Okay. a log- Feature and a register feature. Okay, so you would uh, ex- like from login, I can I can let the user type the on the in the inputs his email, his password, and also I let him click on some button to if he doesn't have an account yet to redirect him to a register page. So uh, I would write that for first to check. If when the user taps on the login button, if it is calling, it's being it's if the handler I pass it to the on click property of the button, I would check if it's calling the the right API I put there to actually log in the user, and I would check also test also if the the button I put there for redirect the user to the register page if it is calling the right method from the router with the hatch arguments to really redirect him to there. So uh, unit test is mostly more about testing one component by a given time. Like you are testing the pieces of that, that specific thing. You do not, do not connect uh, with other components. There is no communication because you are testing the pieces of of which separately. Gotcha. Now, would you be testing any of the rendering stuff too, or just the results of the API request? You know, how how do you handle situations like that, right? Do you so? Mm. Yeah. So, like, so, like, for example, I knew you use like Meteor, and I'm sure they have like a built-in uh, login function, right, that takes care of a lot of things for you. But let's say you did it, right? Let's say you built your own login function. Uh, would you test that within the component or somewhere else? How how would you how would that play a role in it? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so I, I would test it separately. The API would have its own test, and the component would have other tests. So when I w- when I w- when I started testing the 
login component, for instance, I wouldn't test the API itself. I would mock the API to check if the login component is calling the API with the right arguments I want, right? So I I don't use the the actual API of Meteor, the login the login method of Meteor. I would mock it for checking if the login component it's it's using it right, and the the method login method for from Meteor would have its own tests that doesn't involve login component, for instance. I would test in another place. It would have its own suit. Okay, cool. So when you are testing the components, do you, do you mock the API by creating like a fake API that has some values in it? Or uh, do you create the map within the actual test, right? So maybe you'll create like an object and then the object is what the response should look like. Does that make sense? Uh, which, what's like the best approach when it comes to that? Oh yeah, yeah, I think I got it. So, uh, in the login component, for instance, we are importing with the ES6 modules, we are importing, uh, for instance, the React Native Meteor, uh, package. So I would use, uh, another package in my, spec file, I would use the process proxy query to re require my login component to pass in the mockage API. So when the, the file, uh, where I define my login component, uh, tries to import React Native Meteor, it will get the mockage version instead. Where I, uh, the mockage version I create using, for instance, uh, uh, an object called Meteor, and inside this object I have a property called login with password. And for this login with password, instead of passing the actual Meteor uh, function, I would pass a stub function from sign on package. So when whenever the login component calls this guy Meteor that login with password, it would call the stub. So after he, uh, the component she calls it, I can inspect the stub, checking its arguments if it was called, and G with with you which arguments it was called. So it's it's uh, basically this. So also another example, uh, my login components also importing. Uh, the React Native Halter Flux, for instance, the Halting package. So I would pass a mockage version in, in proxy require, require, passing the object of the Halter with stubbage components from Sino. So whenever the guy I fired, the, I triggered the on -click, on click handler from the button that had directs the user to the editor page. I would expect, inspect the stubbage version of Halter and see if it was called with the high right arguments and if it was called with the, uh, the, the called count is the one I want, if it, it was just called once and this stuff. Uh, I think I, I don't know if I answered properly your question. There was other stuff you want to know. Yeah, no. You're on. You're right on track. So, can you explain why you would have to incorporate something like React Native Router Flux into testing too? Right. You know, if someone is building a React Native app, right, they obviously need okay. to transition, but they don't necessarily understand how like testing works. You know, can you just quickly explain why you'd want to, you know, incorporate that too? Like, why is that part of the test? Okay, so for unit test, I don't want to test the the consequences of of haunting, for instance. I want to isolate my component to to check if it's the, it's logic, it's it's being done the right way. So I don't need to know if the the halter it's is doing its job. So I I just want to know if the my component is using the halting the halter interface in the in the right way. So I 
if I, I do not, I can, I can not mock the halter, for instance, but it would create more things to worry. It's not the main point of the testing. I just want to know if the logic itself of the component is doing right, not the consequences of it. If it's, uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm uh, explaining this in the right way, uh, but mostly you have to mock all the, yes, the side effects. You have to mock the side effects so it won't give you uh, no, no headache about other things to worry because you have to to isolate your components to test uh, the pieces of it, not the side effects it would have. I'm isolating its side effects to test it, not to let it uh, they happen. I can explain better if you want. No, that that was a good explanation. Thank you. you. Is there anything else that comes to mind that you know? people just getting started with testing should remember, you think? You know, is there anything that uh, when you first started writing tests, you know, you wish someone told you? Oh, yeah, I would I would, I would hope that someone had been told me about uh, mocking because I was in this, in this very doubt, like, what is, uh, I don't know about mocking the, the side effects. Like uh, one big misconception about testing is that you you think you have to actually let the things happen. Like you have to check if the database is being assessed, if the router is being redirected. You don't know how to do this stuff in the in an easy way. So when you when you mock when you stub your uh, API things that your component is using, it should make your testing much more easier. You don't have to worry about doing uh, crazy stuff to, to check if the the router is being called. When you use something like Proxyquire or Mockery, Mockery, it's another library. Mockery that also works like Proxyquire. When you use these guys, it makes your job of testing much more easier because your components do not have to Use the actual uh, React Native Halter Flux, for instance, or React Native Media, for instance, or keyboard module. You don't, it doesn't have to use that guys because it would break in the test environment. They do not work in mock, right? They they are done for working in the React Native environment. So you don't you aren't there. You are in the mock environment. So you just need to test the logic itself. I think the most uh, people that are getting into testing mostly go wrong on this because they they want to I don't know how to to explain this uh, they want to to test they do not focus on the isolation of the components they and this is the main point of unit testing uh, you is isolating you do not worry about the other side effects you worry about how your component is using those hard side effects. You don't need to. Sh- you do not. You do not. Uh, you don't need to to check them. Like uh, database access and this stuff, you just need to isolate the guys and check the the main logic itself. I think yeah, this is the the main the main thing people get wrong when they start testing stuff. Yeah. I, I was a victim of that too, and still sometimes am, right? Yeah. I think you, you let this for testing the actual with the, which is redirecting access the database, the actual guys when you do integration tests. Uh, so I think that's the where integration tests get more complicated to do because it's doing the checking the actual stuff, not isolated ones. Yeah, definitely. It took me a long time to figure out what I need to test. Yeah, um, it's a yeah. hard way. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hard way indeed to to get into. Yeah. So with all the recent changes that have been taking place with Jest, have you given that a shot yet? I'll be honest, I haven't. You know, really, really did too much research on the latest changes, but have you like? 
uh, what do you think of it? Oh yeah, yeah. I I have that stuff at yet since the the latest change, but I I just saw uh, that they changed. They are still working on it. So I saw an an issue and a guy from Facebook opened it in React Native repository. I think I'm not sure fully remembering of the details of the issue he opened on GitHub. So, but I let me just just check it here again. I think that the main the main thing that they they changed now the the mocking get got really more cool and easier to do because for for default all things that a component tries to import are mocked there. So in mo- in my mock uh, testing switch, I for instance I have to to mock then by picking and and just know you you already have everything mocked and you do the other thing you you mock then you choose what you do not want to be mocked and it also comes with a coverage uh, already just coming with a coverage report already and for a mock setup you would need to configure Istanbul for instance for test coverage reports for instance and it is also come with uh, I think it comes with a uh, a cool it integrates really easily with node inspector now just but I, I just just read the stuff but I just want to to try it as soon as possible and it seems really pretty cool to to test and just like he, how I say the most straight away straight away thing you you have you have everything you need to test right there with Mocano you have to to pick stuff and glue them together to have your own setup. That, that, this is it's cool also because you you can choose what you need, you can choose what you want, or you can just go for a, a solution like Jazz that it provides you all the stuff you need. I, I haven't tested yet, but I, I do want to try, and I think it's worth trying for every anyone that wants to get into React Native testing. It's totally worth trying right now. So as far as React Native testing in general, like what are the main options right now? Is Mocha and Jest, are those like the two main options or are there other things out there as well? Yeah, I think the the main the main guys that, that have it's Mocha and Jest, but I think you can also uh, try to build a setup with tape, for instance, the which is I think it would work not so different from Mocha. I think but I think that Jest and Mocha are the the main guys that you worth trying. But if you are a, a guy that wants simple stuff, you can totally try to build a, a, a testing setup with tape, for instance. Let's move kind of towards something involving actually the motivation behind testing in general. You know, do you guys test for the benefit of yourselves and your company to have a more maintainable and consistent error-free code base? Or is, uh, is testing something your client's um, kind of uh, request, and if you guys have a project and you're trying to um, stay within a certain number of hours or a budget, do you kind of uh, decide whether or not you're going to integrate testing based on those uh, th- decisions? Like, how are those decisions made as far as within your company? Oh yeah, yeah. I think we we when we started developing for clients, we don't test the Java stuff. And if I could just give a tip to myself on the past, I would say that to me to test everything first because we mostly enter joined for testing when we we developed our stuff and the client, for instance, wanted more features. And the features we implemented made the other the older the the features that already was in the system. To break, so we got regressions and had to fix stuff. So with testing, we could introduce new features without breaking the stuff that already is implemented. This is the main point. It's always worth it. That makes so much sense. Yeah, it's it's you you think test is a, when you have a a short deadline, for instance, you think nah no test is 
I don't need testing. I don't have time to do this. But you are going to to lost time in the future because you don't implement the tests, and in the future you try to add more stuff and you broke old stuff, and you you regret about not having tested. I think this is the main point of testing. You can uh, implement new stuff without worrying about breaking all the all the the stuff that you already implemented. Okay, cool. Um, so. Before we wrap this up uh, and get to the picks, is there anything else you feel like uh, that we haven't covered that you want to talk about? Or, Peter, is there anything that you wanted to ask? Uh, no, I think we covered a lot of different topics, especially for people huh. just getting started with uh, this. I think they've got, they'll have a lot of fun things to Google and try out. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay, great. So I guess uh, let's go ahead and get to the picks. Um, Peter, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. So this is this one's sort of off the beaten path a little bit, um, but it's called Tinker Tool. So um, earlier this morning, there was something on Product Hunt. It was a $15 tool that helps you make 15 adjustments to your system, right? So so simple like command line tools that we're all used to running, like show or, or hide hidden files, right? Or, you know, show the transparency, turn off transitions, you know, just typical, you know, Mac things that we like to turn off. But it was 15 bucks. And then someone's like, okay, check out Tinker Tool, which is the exact same thing in open source uh, with a lot more features. So it's really cool. It's basically... Um, just a simple application that without having run any command line uh, things helps you, you know, turn off animations or makes minor optimizations to your system. It's really cool. Um, and it's just called Tinker Tool. Okay. Uh, Gabrielle, do you have any picks? Oh, yeah. I think I, I can talk a bit the, about my recent researching about the integration tests. I'm going to totally write uh, an article about you when I have the, uh, a solution for it. But for now, I have saw an article from uh, TeskaRabbit Tesca guys about integration tests with App Apion for React Native. It seems really cool, really neat stuff. I'm, my hands are itching to try this. Okay, awesome. So I have two picks. The first one is a course on Pluralsight. It's called um, Increased Productivity. Add a dev console to your uh, app with JavaScript. And it's a pretty neat tutorial kind of going through how to create your own JavaScript console from scratch without any frameworks, just using pure vanilla JavaScript. Learned a few things there. And um, the gentleman that wrote it and that uh, did it, he's very, very thorough and clear and concise. And it's just a great um, way to spend a couple hours if you're looking to um, just learn something new. Uh, my second pick is a framework called Weeks. It's spelled W-E-E-X. It's uh, released by Alibaba a few months ago. Um, maybe actually it's been six months now, something like that. Um, I haven't really heard much about it, but I just started playing around with it uh, uh, the, over the weekend. And it allows you basically to build um, native apps using JavaScript, um, similar to React Native. But um, instead of using React, it's using um, a fork of Vue. And I believe in the, new, the newer version, it's going to be using um, almost uh, an exact uh, fork of Vue, whereas right now it's kind of been modified a little bit. So, um, yeah, check it out. Um, and um, I'm really enjoying looking at it. It's, it seems like another viable option. Um, I'm hoping to have someone from Weeks um, to join us here. Uh, to talk about it um, sometime in the future. Okay, well, uh, Gabrielle, thank you for joining us uh, for on our show. Yeah, man. Welcome. Thanks for, I thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Well, um, that wraps up episode 38 of React Native Radio. We'll see everyone next week.